Let's give it up for our next keynote speaker. That's a tough act to follow. Um, I've been to a lot of conferences in my time, but I've never seen such a fun party like this before. Um, so uh, this is my first time in India. It's also my very first time giving a keynote speech on a big stage like this, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, but I'm so happy to be here with you all. I've had the best time in India so far. Um, and um, do we have a slide advancer anywhere that I could use? I need a little clicker. Team? Anybody? I need to advance the slides. Do we have one over here? Let's take a look. There we go. Okay, we got it. All right, so again, I'm Kate, Kate Moran. Um, and I work for a company called Nielsen Norman Group, or as we call it, NNG. And at NNG, um, I get to work with a lot of very intelligent experts in various UX topics, which is a lot of fun. Um, my role there specifically is vice president of research and content. So I get to spend most of my time thinking about what NNG needs to research and write about next. So that's a dream come true for me. It's literally my dream job. But I also still have time to conduct research myself and to write my own articles, which is really my passion. Um, if you are familiar with Nielsen Norman Group, anybody familiar with Nielsen Norman Group? Oh, look at all those ads. Amazing. OK, so if you're familiar with us, then you may know that we are not the first people to rush out and comment on new trends. We prefer to take our time and research things very thoroughly before we publish any kind of findings on them. So that's why UX professionals like you all trust us, because we really focus on reliable UX research. And I think that that approach has served us very well over the years. But in particular, it's been very helpful during the last two years with this big AI craze. So there are a lot of people out there making some pretty wild claims about what AI is going to do for UX or UX research or UX design. So I would like to get one thing out of the way early, which is, can we go back a slide? There we go. Which is that AI does not eliminate the need for user research. Now, I never would have thought I would have to say that, but apparently I do. Um, I'm willing to bet that many of you work with colleagues or stakeholders or maybe even people in leadership who don't know this. There's a lot of thought leaders out there making comments about how AI is going to replace user researchers. So my role will be extinct because we'll just have the AI run the research. Or some people take it even further and they say, well, we don't even need to conduct user research. We can just ask ChatGPT if it thinks that our product is a good idea. Please do not do that. That's, that's not a good plan. Um, so. We don't agree with that. We don't think that AI is going to eliminate user research or user researchers anytime soon. And that is because there are some severe limitations to these tools. Now, we don't know what's going to happen next, despite what some people out there say. They're making these crazy predictions. They don't really know. There's a lot of unknowns right now. So we're going to focus on what AI can do for your, your, your UX research today. So, far from being some brilliant genius that's going to replace us all within a few years, in our 
years of research and experimentation and evaluation, we have found that AI is producing work that's about at the level of an intern. So probably not going to replace us anytime soon. Um, this is something that myself and my colleagues have been saying about AI for a couple of years now, to treat it, think about it in your UX work, like an intern. So this is really important. You don't want to give AI any task that you would not trust to an intern. So somebody who's right out of school, maybe even hasn't finished school, doesn't have a lot of training, isn't very familiar with user experience as a field. That's a good way to think about AI. And I like this simile because it's very approachable. So even for people who don't know very much about AI at all, they can understand this metaphor. By the way, if you have some of those stakeholders or leaders who, uh, who have that idea that AI is going to do all of our UX work for us, you might want to use this metaphor when you're talking to them. So this is a, a way to think about AI and how I recommend you use AI in your UX work. So what I want to do over the next 25-ish minutes is unpack that idea. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially create a persona for this idea. So when we create a persona, we're putting on a face, we're creating a imaginary person, somebody that does not exist, who represents a larger group of people. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put a face on AI. And so I would like you all to meet Ari. Say hello to Ari. Hello, thank you. All right, so this is Ari. This is your brand new AI intern who's going to help you with UX research. This is obviously not a real person. It is a cartoon that I made in mid-journey, so it's, it's an okay cartoon. Um, this person, Ari, is going to represent, sort of stand in for whatever AI products or services or tools you might use in your UX work. Uh, so to me, AI is gender neutral, so I'm going to be referring to Ari as they and them. So let's get to meet Ari and get to know them a little bit better. One thing to know about Ari, Ari is very smart. Uh, so these AI systems are fed on large amounts of knowledge and information, sometimes pretty much the entire internet, any publication, uh, books. So we can think about Ari as being very well read. Um, we can sometimes, in, in, when we're creating personas, we want to put a, uh, a bit of demographic detail behind our personas so they feel a little bit more real. So I'm going to give Ari an educational background. And I'm going to say that Ari has master's degrees in every single subject. So Ari knows a lot. And that is a good characteristic to have in an intern. Ari is also extremely fast literally inhumanly fast. So a task that might take an expert researcher four hours, six hours, eight hours, Ari can do that in a couple of seconds. So it's not wrong to be excited about AI and what it can do for us in research. It has a lot to offer. It can make us more efficient. And that's incredibly important because, as any of you who are researchers know, we are always trying to keep up with fast-paced schedules. There is always more we want to study and learn. So those are great things about Ari, but there are also some, some problems with Ari. So Ari is not a perfect intern. Um, first, it's important to know that while Ari has a lot of knowledge, Ari is, we can think about them as being kind of naive. So while Ari has basically read the entire internet uh, and all of these books and ha has these master's degrees, Ari cannot always tell good advice from bad. And as you know, there's a lot of good UX advice out there on the internet. There's also a lot of very bad advice. And unfortunately, I think there tends to be more bad than good. So if you ask Ari a question, if you ask Ari for guidance on something, they might give you good advice, or they might just regurgitate something they found from some random person who posted on Reddit, and you just don't know. 
And what's even worse is sometimes Ari has a tendency to completely make up information, to lie to your face, uh, which is not a good characteristic for an intern. So we don't always know that we can trust Ari to tell us the truth. Um, finally, Ari doesn't always follow instructions. Now this again, I've, I've managed many interns in my career, and I know this is true of many human interns. Maybe you give them very specific instructions and they skip a few steps. They're a little bit sloppy. That can certainly happen with Ari as well. Okay, so we've gotten to know Ari a little bit better. Strengths, weaknesses. Now let's move on to what Ari needs from us. Let's pretend you know, that you are Ari's manager. And anytime you start managing a new direct report, you want to get to know them and understand how you can best guide them and get the best work possible from them. So let's talk about what Ari needs from us. Ari needs specific instructions, very specific. Ari is going to do better with bite-sized pieces of information versus big, complicated tasks. So for example, imagine Ari is my intern, and it's day one. Ari has never worked in UX before, but knows a lot about UX. And I say, Ari, go and uh, write me a usability testing plan. And that's it. Am I going to get a very good result? Probably not, no. Of a human intern or Ari, probably not going to be very good. So what I have to do instead is break it down into smaller steps and say, OK, first, here are the research questions. These are the things that we want to learn. So next, I want you to help me plan the study logistics. Should we do this in person? Should we do this online? How long should the sessions be? Then we're going to move into choosing the participants. So who would be a good fit for this particular study? So we have to break things up into smaller pieces. Um, we also have to provide context. Because think about an intern, or actually any, any new employee that shows up to your company. They don't know very much about your company. They don't know very much about your product, or your team, or your needs, or what research your team has done in the past. We can think about Ari in the same way. If we want to get good outputs, we need to make sure that we are providing them with the relevant, necessary details. Sometimes that can be pretty complicated. You know, maybe you're writing about, you know, I work for Nielsen Norman Group and we've done these studies and here's what we found and here's what I want you to do and write out all these instructions. If that sounds like a lot of work, it often is. So this is something I find a lot of people don't understand at first about AI. We get all excited about how it takes just a few seconds to complete activities and that is exciting. But we also have to remember there's this little bit of extra time we have to put in up front in order to get good outputs. Now, if you've ever managed an intern, I know I've had this experience a lot, you might have found that by the time you help the intern figure out how to do the task, you've already spent more time than you would if you just did it yourself. So that is certainly the case with Ari as well. So we need to provide specific instructions and relatively narrow small tasks and enough context for Ari to be helpful. We also need to supervise our intern. So just like you wouldn't ask your intern to go create a usability test plan and say, OK, see you later. <laughs> go off, do that on your own. You're not going to do that with Ari. Ari needs a little bit of hand-holding. And whenever Ari completes a task for you, so let's say you ask Ari to find some information for you, to look up some information, or you ask Ari to give you some guidance or advice, or you ask Ari to make that test plan, anything you get from an AI tool, you always need to double check. Because I guarantee you, there are going to be things like mistakes, misunderstandings, they might skip steps. Remember, they're kind of sloppy as an intern, so sometimes even if you give them good instructions, they might skip over some of those steps. And finally, as we talked about, Ari might also just straight up lie to your face and <laughs> give you inaccurate information. So we need to check for those things. So we need to, before Ari gets started, we need to give Ari enough context and very specific instructions. And then after Ari is done, 
we might have to work with them to iterate what they created and maybe manually change some of it ourselves, double check sources, things like that. Now, that's a fair amount of work, right? So we all get excited about, oh my gosh, it, this used to take me four hours and now it takes me four seconds. But don't forget about the time before and the time after that task. Because when it comes to AI, just because a task is done does not mean it's truly complete or that it's been done correctly. So this is definitely helpful, does speed up our workflow, but it's not magic. It's not gonna happen perfectly. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about different types of research activities. And I'll share with you where we've found that AI can be really, really helpful and where AI is just out of its depth and it, it can't help you. We're gonna go through the four stages of any research study. So we're gonna start off talking about planning the study. So deciding what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do it, who we're gonna recruit. Then we're gonna go into conducting research, so actually collecting the data, maybe facilitating a usability test, conducting an interview, running a survey. And then we're gonna move into analyzing the data. So looking at the data that you've collected, making sense of it, and drawing conclusions. And we'll talk a bit about how ARI can also help with reporting data. So when you have all these findings, how do you share those out? Let's start off with planning research. Actually, I'll go back a second, because I wanna show you something. I've found that, I'll go ahead and give you a preview. Ari is most helpful in this planning stage, the first stage, and then also in this analysis stage. Somewhat in reporting, not so much in conducting, and I'll tell you why. All right, so starting with planning. Ari is really helpful with planning. Often before we begin a research study, we wanna do a little bit of homework. So let's say I wanna run a study on uh, e-commerce shoppers on our checkout flow on our website. I might first want to go look and see what publications are out there. What have other people already written on this? So that gives me a head start on my research. Ari's great at that. Remember, Ari has a lot of information in their imaginary head. So we might ask them to summarize some of those things for us. Now remember, for each of these tasks, we have to remember what Ari needs. So for desk research, go ask Ari to summarize what's been published on that topic. Great, gonna save you a lot of time. But I have a colleague, Caleb Sponheim, who's also an expert in AI, and he says, and I think this is a great way to explain this, don't trust information given to you by AI unless you check it and verify that it's true, or unless you can recognize that it is true. Ideation, there's actually a lot of ideation that happens in planning research. We have to come up with our uh, interview questions, the tasks that we're gonna ask. We have to maybe think about different ways to customize those tasks for different, different interviewees or participants. So Ari can definitely help with that, and this is where context is really important. Make sure you give Ari enough context for these ideation tasks to help you come up with good ideas. Finally, documentation. So this is one of those places where it's something tedious that we just have always had to do with research. We have to write out our consent forms, all of our email communication scripts, how are we gonna remind the participant to make sure they arrive on time, those kinds of things. Ari is great with that, especially if you give them a template. So at Nielsen Norman Group, we have a standard template for a consent form for people saying, yes, I understand I'm agreeing in this research. If I give that template to Ari, Ari can fill it out for me pretty well, and that could save me a little bit of time. Now, as I said, conducting research, this is where Ari is not so helpful. Um, one thing that Ari can do for us is take notes during interviews. This is not something that's new. This has actually been around a long time. Like if you've ever used Otter AI, it's been around for years. It takes live notes during meetings and also interviews. While Ari can do this, I don't really think it's all that useful. I would always rather have a human being taking notes versus AI. 
because one big limitation of the, these systems, at least for now, we'll see how this changes, but one big limitation is that they don't have anywhere near the ability of a human being to process massive amounts of contextual information happening in real time. So note taking, yes, it can do it. It can do an okay job at it. It's gonna miss things, it's gonna misunderstand things, but it's, it's okay. Now, facilitating sessions, so actually moderating a usability test or conducting an interview. AI really cannot do that at this point. I will say there are a couple of emerging companies that are working on this that I'm keeping an eye on. So this may be something that we get to eventually, particularly like unmoderated studies where there is no facilitator, but we'll see how that develops. But for now, conducting the research should still very much be done by human beings. And I think this is a place where we get a lot more value from that human insight and understanding. All right, now let's talk about analyzing research. So um, this is, if you remember, where I said AI is also the most helpful in addition to planning research. There's a couple of things that Ari can do for us when it comes to analyzing our data that really can save us time and speed things up. I remember not so long ago, I was analyzing research in Excel sheets. It was very tedious, it took me a long time. So let's talk about what these things are that Ari can do to speed us up. So first, Ari can transcribe interviews. So we just talked about how it can take live notes during an interview, but if you have interview recordings, Ari can transcribe those, can provide you with a written transcript, which is great. That's much easier to tag and analyze. Ari can also summarize that text. So once you have things in the text form, let's say we have 12 interviews, and we say, Ari, go write this all out for me so that I have 12 transcripts. Then what Ari can do is summarize what happened in each of those interviews. Now, this is not sexy. It's not flashy. This isn't like one of the fun things that AI does that you see people getting really excited about, but it is actually really useful if you're a researcher. So we have these 12 sessions, I can very quickly scan through those summaries, remind myself of what happened in each one. Finally, Ari can also clean our data. So let's say that we have a survey with 500 responses, and we want to do some quantitative analysis, but some of the people who responded didn't fill out all of the questions. So for statistical reasons, we need to remove those pieces. We need to remove those responses. It would be extremely tedious, it would take me a long time to do that, but I could. Whereas with Ari, that can happen, again, in a matter of seconds. So that's really handy. A few more things that Ari can do uh, with analyzing research. So let's say that we have these 12 interview transcripts. We can ask Ari to look for codes. Basically, this is asking an AI tool to look for patterns in the data. So we might say, Ari, go through this, these transcripts, and I want you to highlight every time these people talked about the download feature in our product, let's say. Ari can do that. Ari might miss some of those instances, might tag others as relevant when in fact they're not, but what that allows me to do is more quickly look at the, the places that I'm interested in, and I can do the deeper analysis. So please, right now, again, who knows in the future, please do not trust AI to complete your full analysis for you. It will give you very shallow, basic, obvious findings. It'll make mistakes. It'll draw conclusions that aren't really in the data. So it can't do the analysis part for you. We still need humans for that. But it can speed things up quite a bit. Ari does pretty well with quantitative analysis. Ari is good with numbers. Um, but, again, what Ari cannot do is analyze usability tests. So this is, without getting too technical, part of the same reason why AI is not going to be able to facilitate our research sessions for us. Okay, let's do our last stage here, reporting research. Uh, Ari can create drafts, first drafts, we still have to go in there and edit and improve, first drafts of research deliverables. So we might say, okay, Ari, you know, you went through, you transcribed all of these 
12 interviews, and you summarized them, and you coded them for me, and then I, as the human with uh, the contextual awareness that I need, went in there and drew my conclusions. So based on everything I understand about this study and these people and my product and my goals, I drew the conclusions. Now, Ari, you go through all of that analysis and generate a persona that represents this group of people. Now, again, I'm going to have to change that and improve it, but it can give me a good starting point. Now, the last thing I'll mention is something that's just now starting to come out that I'm really excited about. Again, it's, it's not super, it's not really a new technology so much as it is an application, a good application of existing technology, which is using more AI in our research repositories. So if you have a research repository, you basically have this big library where you've collected all of the data and the findings for the studies that your company has run over the past several years, let's say. So let's imagine that a stakeholder comes to you and says, hey, uh, we're thinking about doing a research study on our newsletter audience. We want to study this specific segment. Can you tell me what we've learned about those people in prior studies? So we don't do redundant research. If a stakeholder asked you that, you're the researcher, you would have to comb through all the data and the findings, and you'd have to look for anything relevant, pull it together, and synthesize it to give a response. Now, as these research repository tools are starting to add more AI features, we're seeing what is essentially an AI chat that these researchers, or even the stakeholders, can ask directly. So that's really exciting to me because you know, we've been facing a problem in research where we do a lot of research, we make a lot of recommendations, and what happens? It just sits there. <laughs> Nobody looks at it again. So this is increasing the accessibility and the longevity of our research findings. So we, instead of this stakeholder coming to ask you, what do we know about this audience? Instead, the stakeholder can just ask Ari. All right. Now, you are getting a lot of information thrown at you this week, um, and I know it can be really overwhelming, so I just want to leave you with two really important things to remember from this talk. So remember this when you're working with AI, and this is true if you're doing research, or you're doing design, or you're planning a vacation. <laughs> remember that Ari is your intern, Ari is not your mentor. So, you have to be in control. You have to take that oversight. You have to supervise. Also remember, Ari creates first drafts. So you as the human have to go in there and put the final polishing touches on that product. OK, so we stayed pretty high level here. As I said, that's because I wanted to make sure that everybody could follow along, even if they didn't know very much about AI. But you might be feeling at this point like you want a few more details about what I touched on. And if, if that's the case, then I've got you covered. So I have written a series of articles expanding on what I touched on today. So elaborating on, you know, I mentioned things like that Ari isn't good at facilitating. And if you might want to know a little bit more detail about why that is. So I've written that in an article. I've also written out for each of those research tasks that I recommend using AI for, more details about how I recommend approaching those tasks. In addition, so I said at the beginning that Ari is imaginary, not real, just kind of a representation. Um, I did create a version of Ari, which you will be able to use soon if you want to. This is a custom GPT, so it's just a custom AI chat that's going to act and sound like Ari and has a lot of information and knowledge about UX. Um, so that will be coming out soon if you want to play around and, and get to know Ari kind of for real. Um, if you want to get those, those articles, those details, and if you want to see that, that custom GPT as soon as it's available, I really recommend subscribing to our newsletter if you haven't already. We publish this newsletter weekly. It's fresh UX advice um, on a variety of topics, not just AI. We also have a library of over 2,000 free articles, very detailed about how to do pretty much anything related to design or UX. 
that's it. Thanks, everybody.